You can't start a war in a single day. You can start even a war. In, even in a, in a single second. So for me, I started a war. A war not against a specific person, not against a human being, but against a seamless enemy. And this enemy was statistics, <laughs> was reality. Welcome to 20 Minute Leaders. Just sit back, relax, and learn from the leaders of today. It's a journey. Each one is different, unique, inspiring. Let's get started. This episode is powered by J Ventures, a community-driven VC fund in Silicon Valley, in partnership with Lomitech, and sponsored by Homeward Ventures, Hippo Insurance, Upwest, Hillel at Stanford, Leap, and Birthright Excel, and in media partnership with C-Tech. Welcome to another episode of 20 Minute Leaders. I'm really honored to be hosting a good friend today, Dr. Maor Farid, a lecturer and Fulbright scholar at the Technion at MIT and a member of Harvard's leadership program. He completed his PhD with honors as the youngest graduate at the Technion at the age of 24, focusing on seismic protection of nuclear reactors. He served as a captain and AI researcher in Unit 8200 and was acknowledged as an excellent scientist, top three academics in the IDF. Farid is the founder and CEO of Lilmod Latzliach in Hebrew Learn to Succeed, an NGO for empowering youth at risk from the Israeli periphery, and the author of the top seller, Learn to Succeed. Mao Farid, how are you doing? Fantastic. How are you, my friend? Thank you so much for meeting me here. The last time we met was at, was at Boston, yeah. right? In the MIT campus. Absolutely. Technion, Harvard, MIT, yeah. uh, endless scholarships, uh, author, Forbes, and anything that I can say, it's just going to degrade what you've done already. So I'm not going to even try. <laughs> Thank you. But, but one of the most incredible things that, that you're doing, Mo, is that your, your ability to articulate to your passions mm -hmm. and, and inspire those around you those that grew up with you or grew up in a similar nature to the way you grew up, which I think is, is, is a fascinating journey to uncover. And that's exactly what I want to do in these 20 minutes. You're doing incredible AI research with, with all these universities, but, but we're going to put that aside for now because I want to talk about Mo'o and I want to understand who is, this, who is the person behind the doctor, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, absolutely. Take me back a little bit. Yeah, so I was born in a very difficult neighborhood in a city called Nest Siona to a beautiful couple of parents. Um, but unfortunately, they were not fortunate enough to have a formal education as kids. And as a result, their future was um, dictated by those uh, consequences. It means that they have to work in uh, three uh, jobs each. So it means that we couldn't really see them as children. And due to the fact that I was living in a very difficult neighborhood and I had severe ADHD that were diagnosed much later on, I became a very upset and very violent kid and I was the problematic kid at school and I was the, the hated kid uh, among the, the teachers so I, I didn't know exactly what I should do at school and until one one evening my father told me the words that I care with me until this day he told me my all learn that you won't become like me and you know for a child when his parent tells him that he shouldn't become like me it breaks something inside in his heart and this was the first thing that I remember, like the, the sense of something that is breaking inside me. The second one was that I don't know what studying is. I don't know why it is so important, but I know this is the goal of my life. I have to do it not for myself, not in order to be a, an MIT uh, doctor or something like that. The main goal is better future for my parents, for my family, a hope for my younger brother and sister. So this was my goal uh, since this day on. And later, the, the story wrote himself, I, I, I guess. Now, walk, walk me back a little bit. So even, even at that moment, yeah. you're not just taking it too hard and saying, okay, I'm going to make a switch. First of all, what, what is that switch like? So you go, you go to sleep that night. Yeah. It's, it's not like you, you can ch you know, just change all your friends in one day. You, you can't, obviously, you can't move cities in one day. You can't move to yeah. a new location. Yeah, but you can't start a war in a single day. You can start even a war. In, even in a, in a single second. So for me, I started a war. A war not against a specific person, not against a human being, but against a seamless enemy. And this enemy was statistics, mm -hmm. was reality. For me, I, know, I knew at, the, at this point that studying is not easy and it's not something that we do. People like us, I didn't know what is people like us, but my father, my mother, my younger brother and sister, my uh, family, no one goes really to school. No one talks about studying. And I knew that this is, this is the world that I have to fight, not for myself, but for them. I, I imagine that I'm leading an army of people that are not really collaborating with, with me, but, but put their hopes on my shoulders. This is what, what I felt, and I felt that I'm fighting their war. 
And so th- how does that tangibly happen? How old are you at that point? I was uh, in, in sixth grade, something like that. Sixth grade. Yeah, yeah. At sixth grade, you go to school the next day. Is this, is this an immediate switch? Is this a gradual switch for you? Uh, so both. Uh, the, the first moment that you, you realize that you're in a wall, so you're going to school in another mindset. And then the change increasingly emerges. So it, it becomes, it becomes, uh, it changes you very gradually, very slowly, but the state of mind changes immediately. So at the moment that the mindset changes, your grades are not changing immediately. It takes time, but you know that you're, you're going to fail a lot of time, but you're not going to give up. So this was the quick change and the slow change that uh, went with time. So walk me through some of the milestones because you're not, you, you not only succeeded yourself in accomplishing what you wanted to accomplish, but you also worked tirelessly to create an organization that is then helping others uncover or, or enter a similar war yeah, like you did. Absolutely. So for, the, the first thing was that uh, I, you know, I was super excited by, um, you know, uh, the hope that I give to my parents, but it wasn't enough. Even when I got the PhD, it wasn't enough. I, I went from the stage at the Technion and I brought the, the, the diploma to my parents. And I felt like this uh, catharsis <laughs> that, uh, that I accomplished something, that I, I fixed something. I closed the circle in the, in the universe. But it wasn't enough because it was only a single circle. Mm. And I wanted to close circles of other people. I know that as we speak, as we speak, you and me, I know that uh, one child um, goes to, uh, to, to, rob, uh, to rob a bank and an ad- another girl uh, when, uh, goes to, to prostitution. I know that people's lives are breaking in front, of, in front of our eyes and it doesn't even matter to statistics, to our enemy. And I knew that my, my goal, my bigger goal in life is to help them in order to close the, the, their circles. Because I know that when you have a dream, the, the next thing that you're going to have is hope. Mm. When, you, when you have hope, you can't lose any war. Maybe you can lose several battles, but you won't lose the war. So this is what I wanted to bring to those kids. So what does it mean to learn to succeed? What, how does that concept even work? To be able to learn to succeed. Yeah, first of, first of all, you have to have a dream. When you have a dream, you don't have time to go to, you know, to rob banks and even to be the, the, the violent kid in your, in your neighborhood in, on, or in your class. You have to, to accomplish something. You have to be in a process. When you understand that you are inside a process, all the other skills are emerging in yourself. So when you have a dream, you, you pave your way towards this goal and then you are committed to the process and then you have to, uh, you know how to uh, organize your time, your schedule, etc., etc. So everything is derived from this dream, from this hope. Right. And so you, t- you take that with you and how do you think about the scale of this? So how do you actually go about and, and try to think, how, how do you take this, this deep understanding, which yeah. this deep conviction that you grew up with, that you took in, in the craziest way, how do you instill that, that conviction in others? Yes, so uh, I think that scale is the word that uh, it is so important in this process because I know that I can't do it by myself. I knew it all the time. So this is why I wanted to, to make this word spread across people that are not those children, but were those children. So my colleagues today that graduated from the social and economical periphery that are now uh, engineers, pilots, uh, doctors, etc. They have, I, I told them that their goal, exactly like mine, their goal is also to fight statistics and they can't do it by themselves. They have to join this movement called Learn to Succeed, Lil Modla Tzliach, and teach other and, and, and transform the world forward to other children. This is what we do in Ilmod Latzli. It's, it's almost like a responsibility. Absolutely. This is the word. This is very, our responsibility. And now as you continue throughout your milestones, whether it be in 8200 or Technion or at MIT or at Harvard and the, yeah. the incredible research you're doing, what part does this play in your life right now? Yeah, so it, it's every time, uh, everything I do is, it, this goal is with me. So I, I see all the other things that I do as platforms in order to make this phenomena expand. For example, when I'm doing research at the Technion, I just, I don't just do research in the Technion. I, I host the, uh, the, um, the open days of the Technion for children, for teens, for youths. And I uh, bring people from the periphery to the campus of the Technion and show them the labs and everything. Because Einstein said something which is, um, for me, it is very, Close to my heart, you know. In, in Shmona Matayim, we have a, we have Bad Chamesh Asr. Mm-hmm. Bad Chamesh Asr is the is the base 
in which we go through our courses. And right. So I was a commander there. And in the building that I was teaching, I saw like a quote of, uh, by Albert Einstein that told um, uh, how he exactly said that he said that uh, example is not the best uh, way uh, to, uh, to educate. It is the only way to educate. Mm. So I think, I think that myself, in, a, in all my endeavors for academia and for, and for business and everything, I keep this in mind. And I remember where I came from and to bring those children, those youth into those corridors in order to be inspired. And so growing up with violence, with ADHD, yeah. in, a, in, a, in poor socioeconomic conditions in comparison to what one might expect, what is happening? What, what is happening today? Where is more today? Tell, just give me a taste of, of some of the really cool things that you're doing, yeah. uh, you know, intellectually, you know, the rigorous, because you're not just motivating others. You're also doing incredible research for the world. Yeah. So, um, so my research at the Technion and MIT is, is a joint uh, work between uh, MIT and, uh, and the Technion. So uh, basically we're um, studying uh, chaotic systems or stochastic systems uh, and uh, predict um, uh, disasters in those systems. For example, a fluttering wing of airplanes and earthquakes and, and a break of uh, a leakage in, uh, in uh, nuclear reactors. Uh, using AI and uh, the concept of, uh, of the chaos theory. So it's basically combining my PhD um, uh, research and my uh, experience from Shmona Matayim from 8200. This is what I do at, uh, at MIT and, and the Technion. This is only one example. And in uh, Learn to Succeed, I'm the founder and CEO. We're just expanding and expanding every year. So currently we are helping 5,000 youth at risk every year wow. across the, the country to pursue their dreams and find and pursue their dreams. And I'm also the director of the Israeli Center of uh, Scientists at, uh, at MIT. And I'm also in the program of emerging leaders of the Harvard Kennedy School. So I'm dividing myself among all those, uh, those stuff and I'm um, grateful that I have this opportunity to do all these things. So what's the passion? Where, 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 does, it all, where does it all come down to? Yeah. You know, what, what is sort of the goal, yeah. the vision? The goal is, is to shrink the gap between the socioeconomical periphery and all the other uh, population in Israel. This is my goal and it's not only for the next year or two years, this is for the entire life that I will going, I'm going to wishfully have. So uh, this is the thing and I will do everything in my power in order to do that. So currently is to, uh, uh, through the NGO and through the academia, uh, in the future, it maybe it will be uh, uh, through business and, and you know, as, as I'm going forward in my life, and I remember my friends from Shmonema time, 8200, and I see their fascinating things that uh, they are doing and the technology that I developed at the Technion and MIT, I feel that this is the next stage in order to inspire the socioeconomic periphery and in order to give them not only hope, but bread on the table. Because I have to share with you something. When the corona began, you know, I, 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 I committed in my life in order to inspire and to give them tools. But when corona, when COVID-19 began, I felt that something is maybe missing. Uh, you know, the, uh, I work with thousands of children uh, across the country, but several kids are uh, very close to my heart and I talk to them with, uh, on a daily, a daily basis. So I had one kid that I was calling, uh, that I was talking with uh, every week almost. And when COVID began in Israel, I know that the, the, the economical uh, situation was uh, deteriorating and I kept in touch with this kid. I knew that uh, his story, is, of course, is very hard. He's an orphan from his mother that uh, passed uh, because of uh, cancer. And his father is uh, struggling in order to, to, uh, to earn the minimal wage in, uh, in Israel, the minimal salary. So I was contacting him every, every day almost. And then he stopped answering the phone. I, I realized from one phone call to another that something is becoming worse and worse. Later, I discovered that he uh, just committed suicide. He, what it means for me, of course, that I take it personally. Of course, I take it as a personal failure. But I, know, I knew that he lost hope. The thing that I, 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 I put my life on the line in order to give this one thing to him. But now I know that hope is not only a matter of words and not only in, inspiration, but it also depends on the bread on the table. So as a Shmone Matam graduate, as a Technio on MIT graduate, I know that my way to put bread on the table is using technology. 
So now is to use technology as a platform to give those kids bread on the table. And now we are working on great project that I don't, I can't really talk about right now, but I know that this is the next thing that we have to do in order to, to put the bread on the table for many. Wow. Wow. Uh, your journey is inspiring. You're inspiring. I've been following for such a long time. We've been friends for a long time and, and uh, I, I gained so much of my energy from you. So, so thank you. Thank you for everything that you're doing. Thank you so and much. I, and I love the, the mission and I love the vision of the technology as an enabler, academia as an enabler to put bread on the table, to inspire, to give hope, but, but to, at the end to put bread on the table. I have a few last questions about you before we finish. Mm -hmm. Take me back to your childhood, again to your childhood, yeah. with the violence and with the problems. There must be something very curious about you if you're doing what you're doing today. You must have also been curious back then. What, what really fascinated you as a kid? I, I can talk about uh, by being fascinated by science and by computers because I was, I was in the uh, computer class in my, in my high school. But all of those are just platforms. Mm -hmm. I have to be frank with you. Those are platforms. And the most, the most inspiring thing for me is giving hope to my family. And this is the strongest thing possible. I know that our generation is fascinated by entrepreneurship and innovation. You know, everything it was the is, family. But, but the bread on the table again, hope for bread on the table. This is the strongest thing that, that a kid can have and the, the pain and the sorrow in his father's eyes. I think nothing is so strong like that. Sixth grade, unbelievable. And, and you've obviously answered, you know, what inspires you today. And I think that that inspiration is, is, is just incredible. Yeah, as a child, it was hope for my family. Now it's hope for the people. Exactly. Yeah. And what are three words you would choose for yourself? Or if I were to ask anybody that, is, that knows Mo'or really well, yeah. what, what are three words that might try to capture who Mo'or is? The first one is, is, I think hope is the word that is very strong in my mind. I think the next one uh, defines myself uh, much. It is simple. Simplicity. Because people ask me about, uh, you know, uh, how is to be at Shmone time and MIT and all those stuff. I, I'm, I don't see it as something that defines myself. I remember wh where I came from. And I think the third, the third word is, this is family, is my roots, is wh where I came from. And I'm not talking about uh, Yosef and Mazal, my parents and my brothers and sisters. I see the people of Israel. I know it's some, it sounds a cliche, but I see the people of Israel as my, my family and also the people of the world because we are part of a huge network, a living network, and uh, we love everyone uh, from all the peoples around the world. So I think this is also our mission as the people of Israel um, for the rest of uh, the peoples. Wow. Thank you so much, my friend. Thank you.